Six o'clock on Saturday morning, the phone wrenches me awake. A friend's voice, hoarse with smoke, tells me his apartment flared up in the dark. 6.23, clutching scraps from my closet, I stand at the corner beside his greenhouse, staring at the hole where his dormer used to be. The sodden debris on the street, melted records, mattress shreds, the stink of soot. He waits for me barefoot on a neighbor's couch, huddled under a smudged brown robe, his hair singed short, fingering with his words the endless worry beads of a candle tumbled on its side by a housemate making love, of smoke too thick for a flashlight's beam to slash apart, and limping off his tongue the litany of daily treasures that perished in the night. There are three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance, from which the living being is bound to these and is imperishable. He who is a wise man is born of peaceful and self-control, honest, forgiving qualities, is apart from other entities, for he has seen reality and is successful. Render attributes to find the resolute determination to practice spiritual life. Asceticism, tranquility, faith, and wisdom. Always remain steady in meditation on the transcendent self by being encouraged to believe with the spirit of devotion. Attain self-realization and strive by right means. Remember, knowledge is the rarest of all secrets. It is eternal. This world is illumined with wisdom. Perform your duty without attachment, remaining equal to success or failure. Control the lower self by the higher self and defeat the elusive enemy known as lust. It springs from contact with mode of passion and transforms to anger. Avoid this at all costs. Set exemplary acts and pursue dreams. Perform actions peacefully as a sacrifice. Approach a teacher with humility. Just learn the truth. Inquire submissively. Wherever, whenever there is truth, there is opulence, victory, power, morality. I hold this to be true. Thank you. They're no longer ours but the world 
my love what are the dreams for us now back to you Nights of foreign movies We always said that someday Pack our bags, be on our way Taj Mahal and Lake Louise Sipping wine in Burgundy It is time for autumn's equidistant dance. Circling batons of light and dark initiate the great mystery. Dark, deep, otherworldly. Leaves blaze fiery colors, then wither and die. The dead dance at November's chill. We shake hands with the unseen, renew ancestral friendships. Barren trees, frozen ground, a daily vista. Dark, long nights call us prepare for winter. As season's circle turns, new beginnings bring inner strength. Unexpected harvest, a cornucopia of spirit. Cobwebs, morning sun, stepping stones in a sea of grass, diamonds wet shining from dew. Then later realized my haiku cobwebs is not a haiku, cobwebs in my brain. Got a brand new used car, bright yellow like a sign, a cherry convertible, and it's all mine. It's got one little problem I've almost figured out, and as soon as I fix it, I'll be out and about. And I'm thinking about the places I'll go, and I'm thinking about the people I will get to know. I ain't gonna drive too fast or too slow Oh, I think I can go far in this brand new used car I got a brand new best friend, true blue to the core a quiet companion, but never a bore. Not perfect at all, but so perfect for me that I'm never alone unless I want to be. And I'm thinking about the places I'll go. And I'm thinking about the people we will get to know. With my own best friend, we'll never grow old. Laughing and smiling. With
with my brand new best friend I'll go And I'm thinking about the people I will get to know Just living in tune With the song of my soul Left up to my own device In this brand new old life Yeah, it's my old life My brand new old life Brand new old life Thanks very much. My childhood was spent banging my head on floors, tiles in Lakeview, linoleum in Valley Stream. My youth forsaking shopping malls for self-aggrandizement. Leave out some really bad stuff, and my life has not been a total failure. At Love, I met many a toad in prince's clothing. I kissed them all until my head was seized by a fishbowl. I recognized the farce, but propped up marriages as love shrines, and once proved all you need is a couple of stuffed otters. When I, read, when I read Dissident Gardens, I met my fiction family, the activists, protesters who overcame. I am the daughter of discipline, mathematics, art, do it yourself, but I weary under the crackle of leaves as the warmth withdraws from the air. I love to garden, but in my garden weeds flourish. I stake and turn and dig and plant, but cannot stop the ravenous vole from denying each plant its soul. I dislike ineptitude and the phrase, Boston strong. I drive a torn up road that waits to swallow my tires and adjust my suspension, but I spray paint my car. A curtain of drips adorns the door, laughable. Am I an intellectual or a short-sighted soldier? Who knows? I want to paint roses that look like roses and are likable. But I am just one of many. I grow books and films and words. I want to pluck smiles from the bouquet. I always talk to women who can follow. I always talk to the woman who can follow my directions without having to think. She, obedient, is grateful for my guidance. When I tell her secrets, she writes them down. So I pose these questions. 
Can our dreams save us from this inane daily debacle of daily life, dredging for dollars while the mass mind squelch machine strangles our attention span into compulsive consumption? Can our visions vault us over party politics, building campaign flat platforms over gaping chasms of destitution? Can the cosmos call us to connect our dreams, to rekindle our vision of fulfillment with people and planet? Can these questions pull back the covers of complacency to reveal the, rub the rumbling cauldrons of discontent and disbelief? The urgency of time, the agency of life, the willingness to surrender to a new manifest destiny, incorporate the penultimate into intrinsic meanings, resplendent virtuosity, incandescent, incan descend, descend, ascend, descend, ascend, incandescent, resplendent virtuosity. This is my incantation. The sages of wisdom speak to us in the silent interludes between sound bites and important announcements to remind us to listen to the urgings of our hearts. Thank you. Halloween or Samhain time, ancestors of mine entered into this time and place to celebrate a dance. And then we were invited into the council of all living things, escorted by an elephant. Oh, there's an elephant in the room, my friends, an elephant strong and true. And he's seeing a shaken time with species dying and webs of life interrupted strangely. The starfish have turned to mush in the Pacific. The dolphins and whales are shell-shocked with sonar in the Atlantic. And the manatees are weary of oil spills in the Gulf Coast. The bats have white nose, and the bees are no more. And the moose in the woods of Maine are fading, and so it goes. There's an elephant in the room we cannot ignore anymore. There's an elephant in the room. We can barely squeeze around him. There's an elephant in this room that can no longer be denied. This not being able to see is a terrible kind of lie. Rapid and multiple extinctions changes everything. Seeing the elephant in the room can no longer be denied. Indeed, so many species are leaving us. Are we going to stay alive? Enter into the council of all living things. See the elephant strong and true. Look into his eyes. He is waiting for you. The ancestors nod in agreement. It is time, it is time, it's time. It is time for us to take our place in this council. <clears throat> we are just one of many living things, treasuring all that is alive, taking our part with the greater whole. This can no longer be denied. I was the hottest little jazz baby of the jazz age. Sex intrigued me. I could do or say anything if I distributed my smile and delivered the ironic. Something perverse, some deeper force compelled me. I wanted to probe society's secrets, to tell the truth to the smoother over folk. I may be no angel, but I can spread my wings a little. When I learned once you've lost the audience, you have to fly in on the wings to make your entrance and shoot yourself to make your exit. I paid them all and closed the show. Just because I'm vulgar doesn't mean my heart isn't 22 carat. Before I wrote The Drag, that gangster legs diamond made the made the biggest headlines, sorry, made bigger headlines than any Broadway show. No, not one playwright had explored homosexuality, 
Why, I ask myself, why do the most modern editors of scandal sheets run from the word sex? It hides an opposite sex, fair sex, yet kids are making babies in the rumble seats of Packards. No wonder it's called the wicked age. From every major city they came and paid on heard of prices to see the drag. It took hours to empty the theater. The audience stuck around after the show, curious to see the actors. Though I wrote not one profane word, the censures pressured me. Tone it down, tone it down. New York Bandit, afraid to disappoint the many odd, important people. Obscene, lascivious, lewd, the two pious held. Wasn't Oscar Wilde thrown behind bars for merely hinting at his passions? Isn't it in the theater, the army, the English public schools? Didn't the verbatim vice cause mayhem in the German Kaiser courts before the war? You can find your good and evil every night in the fancy speaks. The Lido, Flamingo, and Silver Slipper, the best, the worst, the highs and lows meet there. My father taught me how to dance the St. Louis Blues before I was seven, the way they dance in India. I rose to stardom in the baby vamp at 17. When I stood trial for the drag, I wore taboo, a tight metallic evening gown, and the court growled. Her navel moved from right to left. Did you see her navel? Asked my lawyer. Well, something in her middle moved up, down, <laughs> east, west. The courtroom tittered. Too much of a good thing can be wonderful, but nothing stays the same. Vaudeville theaters become movie palaces. Success is a golden sword. It has two sides and what? The two-faced do in private, they condemn in public. I don't expect to get silk underwear to read Freud, Young, and Adler on Welfare Island where I'm imprisoned for corrupting the morals of youth. But there is realistic drama here in the tombs. They come like vermin, the blameless, the despairing, and those who improvise their own evil. The damp air peels the paint from damper walls, while mold nibbles away the gray riff of hope. Oh, the tragedy of human lives. I've seen ravished, torn, and toothless faces, and I have shivered. It could happen to anyone. hard at work in autumn, inspired by my fascination with mortality and, and the miracle of being alive each day, as well as being very allergic to bees. Is it the last, it is, <laughs> is it the day of the last September before yesterday's October rolls around once again? And these bumblebees know it with the course of days and hours running like autumnal breeze through their wild veins, with hearts pumping out calendar awareness of our mortality. 
You see the way they are lighting and landing upon the last overripe bloomings of pink spike? The late red cluster blooms all waiting their turn to burst forward their pink fringe of white like a thousand final fingers that beckon. These bees whose hearts are pounding inside all about consumption, not only of nectar, but of bird song above and moist ground below and companionship of monarchs and earthworms and the necessary imbibing of sun rays and moonlight. While they know how it all spins by in a moment, like the fastest of passing by of springtime clouds, like the sudden downpour of late summer occasional rain, like the eventual silence of the snow-covered ground, then comes again the newborn wail of next spring's tiny buds of things like forsythia, crocus, and daffodils, each one happily announcing its new way into the world. Then once again pay attention. Watch for the heralding of legs and wings with emerging bees working fast as they can, saying, here I am to everything they meet. Thank you, Deborah. That was beautiful. <laughs> so we did collaborate.